welcome to worship through the First Christian Church Disciples of Christ in Selma, California, via live stream. While it is saddening that the churches all over cannot physically be present to worship our God, we celebrate with thanksgiving the alternatives that allow us to allow, allow us all to stay connected and worship still as one community of faith. As we continue to seek guidance throughout these troubling times, let us continue on this journey through Lent. If you have a hymnal and praise book at home, feel free to use them for music throughout the service. If not, words will be on the screen. Let us begin our worship. Week five, where are we? Repentance. We have been born into a world of sin. We try to do the right thing, but at times we fail and temptation seems to win. At other times, we seem to drown in our failures, believing nothing good can come from us. We forget that God has called us to repent and that God remembers our sins no more. We light these candles as symbols of our trust in Jesus Christ, that our sins are forgiven when we repent and turn back to God.
Let us pray. God of mercy and compassion, we come before you on this Lord's Day to worship you and to give you thanks. We aren't worshiping the way we usually do, but we are worshiping. We aren't gathering in our sanctuary the way we usually do, but we are gathering. And we have heard it said that wherever two or more come together, you are in our midst. So we come together in all our different places to worship you, to sing your praises, to hear your word, and to lift our prayers up to you. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, some of us may be fearful. We may wake during the night, worried and afraid. Grant us, we pray, the courage to face the unknown, to walk through our fears to the other side, knowing that you walk alongside us. Lord, hear our prayer. Merciful God, we ask your blessings on all the helpers, all the people who are putting their own lives at risk to provide life-giving services to others. First responders, healthcare providers, pharmacists, delivery people, truckers, restaurant workers, and the grocery shoppers, the prescription fetchers, the mask makers, the volunteers giving out food and other supplies, the blood donors. For all these helpers and all those we have not named, Lord, hear our prayer. We lift up, as always, those who are ill, recovering from surgery or injury, who are lonely, depressed, anxious, for those who cannot get medical care, for those whose loved ones are in the hospital or nursing home and cannot visit, and for those loved ones, especially those who do not understand why their visitors aren't coming. Lord, hear us. There are so many who need prayer, every day, but especially now. Let us take a moment to lift the prayers of our hearts. Holy One, we know that we are sinful. We try to do the right thing, but sometimes we fail. We give in to temptation and do those things that hurt you. We repent now of our wrongdoings and ask your forgiveness. Lord, hear our prayer. We have made bold to pray all these things, Lord with conviction that you will hear our prayers and forgive our sins. For we have been taught to know these things about you by your Son, Jesus the Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning is from John 9 verses 1 through 7 from the Common English Bible. As Jesus walked along, he saw a man who was blind from birth. Jesus' disciples asked, Rabbi, who sinned so that he was born blind, this man or his parents? Jesus answered, neither he nor his parents, 
This happened so that God's mighty works might be displayed in him. While it's daytime, we must do the works of him who sent me. Night is coming when no one can work. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. After he said this, he spit on the ground, made mud with the saliva, and smeared the mud on the man's eyes. Jesus said to him, Go, wash in the pool of Siloam. So the man went away and washed. When he returned, he could see. May the Lord add his blessing on the reading of his word. You know, there are a lot of online services to going on today. Some of you will be watching several. If you are one of those people, you will notice that I am not preaching from the same passage as many of my colleagues. And the reason for that is this. At First Christian Church in Selma, they decided years ago that whenever there are five Sundays in a month, we would give our regular musicians the week off. In their place, we have the Raisin Tutors, which is a mostly brass band led by Hugh Adams, and they play all the hymns and music for our worship service. They have a song list, and I select the hymn that comes after the message from that song list. Sometimes that means swapping scripture readings because when I write my sermons, I am aiming at the hymn that comes right after it. That hymn is intended to reinforce the message. If I do it right, and in this instance by right I mean the way I want to, then the end of the sermon rolls naturally into the beginning of the hymn. Since this was to have been a Raisin Tutor week, I swapped the Dry Bones passage that I preached last week with Jesus Heals the Blind Man. As it happens, there is no message in, in our online services. The Raisin Tutors are all at home, sheltered in place. The music is being performed in one place, the scriptures being read in another, the prayers prayed in yet another, and the message and communion time are here in the parsonage. You all are at home, singing and praying along with everyone else, and in just a few minutes we will share the Lord's Supper. We are all together participating in a worship experience in our separate places through the miracle of the internet. Where are we? We are in an unprecedented situation. No one has ever done what we're doing before. Yes, there have been pandemics and plagues with quarantine in place. Yes, there have been times when panic buying caused shortages of certain products. Yes, there have been congregations who could not meet in their sanctuary because it burned down or got flooded or destroyed in a tornado or hurricane. But even then, Church members could get together in person for worship, even if they had to meet in a parking lot or a park. Never before, to my knowledge, have all those situations been true at the same time. Never before, to my knowledge, have thousands of congregations found themselves in the situation that we're in today, holding worship remotely. We're exploring new ideas sharing ideas with others, looking for more ways to connect from a distance. We're in a brand new world, and whatever comes after this is over, it will be a different place from where we are used to being. Rabbi, who sinned so that he was born blind? This man or his parents? Jesus answered, neither he nor his parents. This happened so that God's mighty works might be displayed in him. If you watch the TV news or spend much time on Facebook, you will have heard blame being tossed around as to whose fault COVID-19 is and why it became a pandemic. I've heard it said that it's China's fault even that it was a plot on the part of communist China to wipe out the United States. This is totally not true or logical. It's a disease, a virus, one we have never seen before. Not a communist plot. Yet at a time that we should all be pulling together, some people are using this racist blame game as an excuse to attack Asian Americans. I've heard some preachers claim that this is God's punishment for sin and faithlessness. 
They're saying if you're right with the Lord, you will not become ill. Some of those preachers have died since they said that from COVID-19. In fact, quite a few of the earliest known cases were somehow church related. The pastor had it and nobody knew, or a choir member or visitor from outside the congregation. There are other pastors who say that Jesus will protect us and the church must continue to meet as usual. Jesus does indeed protect us from despair when things are hard, from spiritual death, from loss of hope when things may seem hopeless. But Jesus does not protect us from our own egos or poor judgment. Rabbi, who sinned so that this man was born blind, this man or his parents? Jesus answered, neither he nor his parents. This happened so God's mighty works might be displayed in him. Did God plan for this terrible plague to happen? I don't believe that. But I do believe that God's mighty works can be displayed in us as we walk through it just as in that blind man that Jesus healed. We are being asked to do things that are difficult, to behave in new ways, to relate with other people in new ways. We're being asked to see the world in new ways, to open our eyes to the needs of others in ways that many of us really had not considered before. I can tell you for sure that after almost two weeks of not leaving the house, I have a new understanding for what it means to be homebound. I don't mind staying home. I don't mind being alone with my cats for days on end. I do mind not being able to go buy my own groceries. I do mind not being able to invite someone into my home when they come and return my cat carrier or bring me a mask that they made themselves or cake. I do mind that I cannot hug them, that we can't be within touching distance of each other. I do not like it very much, but I'm willing to do this thing to help save lives. I'm used to being fairly independent and this sudden screeching halt to all my usual activities is disconcerting at best. I'm having to open my eyes to things I've been blind to before. So although I do not believe that God plans for terrible things to happen, I do believe that how we respond to these terrible things is a direct answer to God's mighty works inside our hearts. So many are responding with ways to help. First, there are all those who put themselves at risk every day on their jobs. First responders, medical personnel, grocery workers, restaurant workers, delivery people, truckers. Then there are all those others who are finding ways to love their neighbors, running errands for those of us who cannot go out, getting our prescriptions and our groceries, making masks, calling each other to make sure we're all okay, posting encouraging words on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram. These are not small things. These are life-giving acts. Gifts of God's grace delivered through humans. This really is being God's hands and feet in the world. Where are we? My late ex-husband, Tanae, loved to take side trips. We'd be on our way someplace and he would just turn off in some random direction for no apparent reason except to see a new thing, new road, something new. This made me crazy. And when I would ask if he was lost, he always responded, I may not always know where I am, but I am never lost. We may not know exactly where we are right now, but we do know that we are not lost. Jesus has sent us off to wash the mud from our eyes. When we return, we'll be able to see past all the things we've been blind to before, places in it in new ways. When we return, we will give thanks for all the things we have learned and all the experiences we have had and all the new possibilities ahead. Where are we? We are in God's hands, and so we are safe. 
We are safe from despair and hopelessness and fear. Amen. We come now to the Lord's Supper. When we last met in person for worship, we knew that the thing we were going to miss the most was this. Because when we come to this is what we do. We share this feast of love and remembrance of Jesus' sacrifice and his resurrection. So I invite you to come to the table today. You may have a table set at home with elements of juice, water, bread, crackers, something. Or you may simply choose to take this time to pray. Whether you're alone or with family, you are invited to join me and everyone else who is participating in this service and this meal online. What I tell is that on the night he was betrayed, Jesus had a meal with his disciples, his dearest friends. And at the beginning of the meal, he took the bread and giving thanks to God for it, he blessed it and broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, this is my body for you. In the same way, at the end of the meal, he took the cup and again giving thanks, he shared it with all his disciples saying, this is the cup of the new covenant, my blood poured out in love for the forgiveness of sin. As often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, do it in remembrance of me until I come again. We are grateful, O God, that you do not hold our sin against us, so let us not forget your love when we eat this table. Grant that in every living moment we consider ourselves dead to sin and alive in Christ through this bread and cup.
Now is a part of our service where we invite you to consider how you, have, how you can steward the gifts God gave you. Usually our response to God's greatness is putting something in the offering plate as a part of our worship. But now things have to happen differently. We can't really put anything in a plate now, but we can still give. We can put a check in the mail. We can go on to the church's website at www.salmodisciples.com and give online. Or if we do online banking, we can even use the bill pay option through, your, through our bank. While the majority of us are quite limited in our mobili mobility for the time being, we can still keep the church moving forward. As we near the end of our service, we continue to encourage you to stay in prayer for ways to be in the church, to be the church. Let us allow God to open our eyes as we seek to share the power of his love in new ways day by day. As we prayerfully open ourselves to these possibilities, let us sing Be Thou My Vision in your hymnal 595 verses 1, 2, and 4. Thanks be to God. 